I keep telling people that it's a crack trip of a ride. Not that I know what that is. It's just a lot. If you've seen Deadly Illusions on Netflix, you're probably like us and are wondering what the just happened. The psychosexual thriller starring Kristen Davis, Dermot Mulroney, and Greer Grammer has left a lot of viewers begging to know what's up with this wild movie. We sat down with the filmmakers to try and figure it all out. Warning, spoilers ahead. So how did Deadly Illusions come to be? I wanted to see if I could write something that was centered around a feeling. And the feeling was this gray area of am I crazy or is the other person crazy? In that space, we don't have a really central antagonist, right? Which sort of vicariously like breaks all screenwriting rules. And as a filmmaker, what you want to do most is you want to make people squirm in their seat and jump up and down and yell at their TV or maybe love their TV. I just wanted to do something opposite of following those rules. My first reaction was yes. I'm so in. Annie and I sat down and she pitched me these ideas and she walked through the beats with me and literally like anything she told me, I was like, yep. And I think that kind of shocked her. I think she was kind of surprised by just how like on board I was. Like I had no reservations. I wasn't like, ooh, that one feels like a little much. I was like, yep, love that, love that love that but also like it was so amazing that she was pitching me this idea and this role and this script or this idea of this character that i've never played nor ever really had the opportunity to play before um because i had kind of been typecasted a little bit from my roles in awkward in the middle which i love like i'll play ditzy blondes forever i love playing them they're super fun but i had never really been given the opportunity to play something like this i've never felt more loved more at home, more a part of anything than when I'm here with you. Please don't ever let me go. No, no, of course we would never. The film also stars Kristen Davis as Mary, and yes, the same Kristen Davis who played Charlotte in Sex and the City. But just getting to play with her on so much of this was so amazing, and she's so talented, and she was so prepared every day on set. Like, she knew her stuff, she knew what she was doing. It was really amazing to watch her work. Um, same with Dermot. Something about you is different. I'm not sure what, but I like it. I've been a fan of Dermot for forever. I mean, like, my best friend's wedding, The Family Stone, like, all of these movies that I love to watch. It was such a dream to get to work with him. It was just so great to be able to work with these really two amazing, inspiring, top of their game actors. I definitely felt like the little guy, but they were also so great, like, doing that scene in the shower when, you know, I kind of go crazy at the end. After we did the first take, Dermot looked at me and was like, that was really good. You're really good. And I was like, thank you so much. Like I was so, cause I was so nervous. I was so scared about doing that. Almost embarrassed to kind of try to do it in front of these really inspiring, amazing, talented actors. And so being able to do that and have them both be like, yeah, you're doing so good. It meant, it meant the world. It was such, I mean, such a dream. Regards to our talent, our cast, especially with Dermot as the male in our cast, he championed the material like no one else. And that was so invigorating to have that sort of figure on set who really understood what we were going for. And I said in the letter, let's try and make something where less is more, where it can be more tantalizing and intriguing than actual pornography. And what's so fun to see how the reactions have been to the film and whether they're good or bad, I'm just tickled that that goal was achieved. We thought we were just gonna make like this small independent art house film that we could go to festivals together with. And, you know, never did we think this would happen. Never did we think Voltage would acquire us and then take us to Netflix and we'd have this huge platform. Okay, we still have a lot of other questions. Like what's going on with the sound design? When Grace uh, runs away in that key moment of the shower scene. Come in. It needs to tickle you, you need to giggle. They created a, a tickle sound and you're just supposed to bust up laughing. Like you're supposed to laugh. I think two things are going on. The female gaze, which is shocking, that is different. A lot of this generation hasn't been exposed to this subgenre, And so they're reacting like, this is so crazy and weird, but this is not that crazy and weird. What's fun about it is that like you expect it to fall into tropes like that's the thing people when they put it on they're expecting one type of movie and they're either 
completely like into it and, and open to the ride that it takes when it doesn't go the way you think it's supposed to, or they get like really upset by it. And they're like, that wasn't what I was expecting at all. And it's like, but that's the fun of it. And why does Mary smoke so many cigars? So in regards to Mary's cigar use, so one, I smoke cigars sometimes when I write. And I find that smoking cigars brings out a masculine side to me. We're flipping the narrative a little where it starts out, he's the breadwinner and then things switch and now he's cooking dinner and now she's the breadwinner and she's wearing those pants. The cigar is a symbolism for the masculine energy. But what we all want to know, what happens at the end? That is the big question. To everyone it has been so like, but what happened? It feels like they're like mad at us. And so to me, it's like, you're supposed to draw your own conclusion. You're supposed to come up with your own theories. There isn't supposed to be an answer to that. That is all on you as a viewer and what you want it to be, which kind of goes back to the whole movie, which is what's real, what's not. Is this Mary's fantasy? Is this actually happening? Is Grace a figment of her imagination? There's so many different thoughts and questions, but that's part of it. It's like a choose your own adventure almost. Like we want you to question those things and we want you to wonder and draw your own conclusions. That ending never changed. That was the first thing that Annie came to me with and I immediately was like, I love that you don't know who's walking out. Everyone wants us to explain it, everyone wants an ending and I'm like, that's not the point. The point is that you get to sit there and decide what you want it to be or what you think it is. If I had to choose three words to describe the movie, I keep telling people that it's a crack trip of a ride. Like I like, that's my word. Like every time I'm like, just beware, like it's like a crack trip. Like you're not that I know what that is, it's just a lot. Like, just know that. Mystery, sexual, crack trip. <laughs> That's the only way I've been like ha able to describe it is like, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. I would start out with the word fuzzy just because that was the intent. I wanted to give the audience an experience what it's like to not have clarity. <laughs> that feeling is a frustrating feeling. I guess fuzzy, tantalizing, and mind bending would be my three words. And thankfully, fans can make a decision for themselves, you know? And, and if you hate the film equally as those who love it, that's okay too. Maybe you'll come back to it in five years and laugh your ass off. I don't know. Love it or hate it, we can all agree. This is one wild ride. Deadly Illusions is now streaming on Netflix.